Hey everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Kelly Moto TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. Welcome back. Finally, finally, guys, more DIY Ducati Street Fighter uh, videos. I apologize for the delay. Work has been crazy, and uh, I really just honestly haven't had a lot of time. But today, today we're working on this little buddy. I've had this super light uh, chain and sprocket kit. Uh, it was sitting in the garage for like a month now and I've been wanting to get it installed. Today's the day and today I'm going to try to do as in-depth DIY video as I can for you guys. Um, it's a easy job, it's lengthy and it is going to take some tools so make sure you've got a garage and a place to do this. But it's not a very hard job. So uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through everything you need. I'm gonna do chesty cams today. I'm gonna try to get everything that I can to make it as most informational as possible. So let's get to what we need, what we've got, and everything like that. And uh, let's get this thing broken down and worked on. All right guys, so here we are. We are going to be taking the front sprocket, the chain and rear sprocket, hub everything is going away uh, and we are getting into a new complete chain and sprocket system so first what you're going to need because it's sunday morning you're going to need your cup of coffee and your phone for youtube videos to uh if i miss anything check it out i'm always on youtube um a couple real quick on the tools uh so i got an impact screwdriver a variety of allens from four to eight i'm not sure exactly which one we'll need but we'll we'll talk about it in the video a ratchet a breaker bar uh we've got a uh, what is this, a 14 millimeter multi-point socket, some uh, needle nose, which we're gonna talk about the needle nose and the impact gun. You're gonna need a grinder, trust me, you'll need a grinder and a chain tool, but we're not gonna be breaking the chain with the tool, you'll understand in a minute. Um, and then big tools here. Okay, so before I knew and before I understood, I bought a kind of cheap multi-tool for the rear nuts and the front sprocket. And what I noticed on the rear uh, nut with the impact is this left a lot of marks, okay? So when I was over at Moto Wheels, they told me um, uh, Speedy Moto has, let's see if it can get focused, has this one that's actually impact safe. And what it does is it really doesn't leave that marring effect. So um, I, I'll recommend that, okay? Now, um, half of this kit is uh, been purchased all from Moto Wheels. And the other half of this kit has been purchased by M Belisi Moto. Now, the, the first part of the kit is obviously the super uh, light quick change sprocket kit with the 520 chain conversion and of course 520 sprockets. We've kept the sprocket teething the same. We didn't change any of the sprocket teething, okay? Uh, we've got a rear 520. This is a 42 tooth 520. And this is a 15 tooth front 520 sprocket. And we've got the gold professional. Oh, I just can't wait to get this out, but uh, it is all gold. And you can see the theme, see the theme that we went into the black, blackening this out. This is going to be all black. And the reason is I'm going to show you the other side, but I really just want to get clean. We're going to be working on the rear set soon. So stay tuned for that video because rear sets, I think, are coming soon. Um, but uh, Bellissimoto does, is a CNC dealer. And I kind of like the CNC stuff because it's very not logoed as much as some other companies. So you can see on the, um, the, the outer housing, there's one little logo, but it's a nice black. It's not cut up. It doesn't have the silver on it some black CNC nuts, uh, our rear hub nut with our rear locker, again, all black on black, and then the super light kit. Now, I've already changed, you guys didn't see this when I changed it on the, um, the wheel, but I've got the CNC, and you can see it's just very, very, very faint logo on there. Uh, we're gonna be doing CNC stuff because this, oh my God, Two months it's been in the box. I apologize, it's coming, trust me. But 
CNC window, CNC here. Uh, so we've got some CNC stuff on the bike. So let's get the chesty cam on and let's start talking about breaking this down and getting everything off so that we can get everything back on. All right, guys, so first things first is we are going to be breaking the rear uh, nut off of the back. So you're going to need your needle nose, okay? <clears throat> so I've kind of already pre-touched this because I like to make sure I've got all the tools laid out and everything like that. And I will tell you, um, so the, the tool is going to make this much easier to remove this bolt because it's got the correct stars. So if you do not have an impact gun, you you can use a breaker bar it's going to need a big maybe an extension for the bar but the trick with the breaker bar is have someone stand on the rear brake while you're breaking the rear nuts okay so that's my little my, my little hack but um getting into this earlier today is so first thing you're going to do is pull this little uh pull the little washer off or excuse me the little cotter pin off so the little cotter pin you're just going to pull it out and around and then you basically just pull that out of the hole so this is a locking pin this is designed to keep everything um, kind of locked in so if this nut does get loose you can actually it, it actually keeps the nut in now here's what's a little crazy is I just took this off this morning and wanted to make sure that this fit and I put it on and I noticed that the nut wasn't even torqued, wasn't even torqued. Like I literally, you should be taking this off with an impact gun. So quite, uh, quite interesting that this was not even torqued. And, and um, my understanding, these are like two, 174 pound feet of torque. So pretty, pretty crazy. So um Let's go ahead and leave this now that that's loose. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna gr just grab the impact screwdriver and we're gonna grab, I believe it's our five millimeter. And we're gonna grab and take off our front housing. So I heard that this will be a problem. And sure enough, yeah, um, I was I was hoping that we can squeeze by, but it isn't. Uh, we're gonna have to crack our uh, rear sets off here and pull the rear set off so we can gain access to this. Uh, eh. All right, well let's get uh, let's get these broken off then. All right, so now we've got, uh, we've just broken it loose. So we got one, two, three nuts there. And then this just pretty much pops off. And then we've got our little metal bracket here. And uh, what we're going to be looking at is what size this is. I believe it's a big boy. So I got a couple big boys over here. Um, these, all of these nuts for these were, uh, the rear sets were six millimeters and the cover, the plastic cover was five millimeters. And it's not that, and biggies. So eight, eight millimeters is what we've got there. So uh, we're gonna probably, let's see, I doubt, I doubt, I doubt. I know you guys are gonna be like, really, you think so, Bill? <laughs> yep, not. So we're gonna need to break this off with the impact gun. So let's go ahead and grab the impact gun. Again, if you don't have an impact gun, have somebody stand on the brakes and get that broken loose with the, uh, with the um, breaker bar. All right, guys, so we've got the impact gun. Hopefully we've got enough air in the tank and we're just gonna get this thing broken loose. And there we go. And that's basically all we need the impact gun for. Uh, and then so we've got this loose so now all the chain is loose so let's go ahead back to the back here and start working on getting this whole assembly done and the uh, make sure that we've got everything ready for the you can clearly see here 
the master link of the chain. Now, a lot of people say you can cut any of them, which is very true, but I like to find the master link. It's gonna be easier to cut and grind. So we've got the master link back here on the sprocket. I find it e easiest to, to do it right on the mid back of the sprocket. So let's get the grinder plugged in and grind that off. All right, so you can see I've got it good and ground down. Hopefully you guys can see that really well. And uh, so trick that I've learned over the years is don't use the breaker kit. You can actually stick a screwdriver right into the end and tap it off. And uh, if you ground it down enough, it should start to work its way out. And presto. We've got the link off. There's a couple O-rings, which we're gonna just pull those off. And we can push this master link through. So now we've got everything here. And voila, the chain is off. So we can go ahead and pull the chain through on the front sprocket. And of course we're gonna be messy. So we get our chain snake over here, which we're gonna hang it on our sprocket wall back here, here in a second. But we'll just lay that down. And uh, now we're ready to go ahead and start pulling this off. So this can, you can get this now taken off completely. So get our nut good and backed off. And now I'm saving everything here. So this will just slide right off. You're gonna have a washer there. So we're gonna reuse obviously the washer and the cush and of course the nut we're not gonna use because we've got a new one. And uh, we're gonna use the Cush uh, drives or the Cush from here, we're gonna insert them into there. So we've gotta get those popped out, which is gonna be a job of its own. But uh, let's go ahead and get the front sprocket off now. And the front sprocket, like I said, is it's pretty much already done. So we're just gonna unscrew this. And of course we're gonna reuse this. This is gonna come out and there's our front sprocket. So we're all ready to roll and we'll grab and bring this over here so we can see kind of what we're dealing with over here. And uh, so our next little challenge is we're not using that. We're not using that. We're using this and this is we've got to break these uh, these nuts off of here. And this is a little bit of a challenge in its own because you're gonna need a multi-point uh, nut driver for here. But on the back, there's uh, also a little, uh, you're gonna to have to counter. So uh, I'm gonna do my best, but I don't, I've never done one of these. So tricky trickies. All right guys, so after some quick playing around with the uh, the rear, uh, cush drives as you can see I got a couple of them out um, you know the back these backs are very very brittle in these bolts so d don't don't try to take them out from the back try to take the nuts off from the front and the easiest way that I found was just grabbing the impact gun and just uh, and there we go so now we've got our our uh, basically our holder which is this not going to be using that. And uh, what we're trying to do now, what we've got to figure out is, so this is, this is, uh, we're going to be, let me explain to you the quick change sprocket kit and why the quick change sprocket kit is very, very beneficial. So the quick change sprocket kit, you're going to have to take off the rear sprocket and everything, but you just redo this. You take this off, take the sprocket off and you're not changing the whole sprocket and you don't have to deal with these cush things anymore because these cushions will always stay in here they don't ever need to come out because you're just unbolting the sprocket and pulling the sprocket out so let's figure out how to get these out next and uh, get them into here and then back on the bike all right well we're back uh sooner than later because i just turned this over and that they just 
they just pop they just pop out <laughs> so we're gonna pop out all of these and then so this is so you can see this is the whole sprocket drive and this is a drive and the sprocket that's just the quick change so we're not gonna be using this can go over there and uh so i think i want to clean these up and maybe put a little bit more grease on there but I just basically want to make sure that they're nice and clean. So when they go in here, they came out of the back, I think. Or no, they go, they came out of the front. That's right. So they're just going to set right in there. And you can see that they just go right in. But I'm going to get them cleaned up a little bit. Just I'm here. Let's get everything cleaned up. While I'm cleaning, I'm also going to take you guys over here because we're going to clean up this area. And we're going to clean up all of this area where all of the old, you know, chain stuff and goop and blah, blah, blah. We're going to put a little bit more, uh, um, just a teeny bit of grease on here, a teeny bit, and a little bit of new teeny bit of grease back here. And we're going to get it all cleaned up and uh, make it look like new. All right, so uh, I started kind of touching everything and kind of figuring out how everything goes together. And I realized that I ordered the wrong nuts. I actually ordered the CNC quick change nuts, which are for here. And I didn't order the Kush drive nuts, which go here. So unfortunately we still have a little silver on the bike for now. I'll have to get these ordered, but those are kind of an easy change so we can get that done later. But let's go ahead and since I already have these CNC nuts and well, they look a little bit better, let's go ahead and pull the quick change uh, sprocket nuts off and go ahead and get the, uh, the ultra lightweight. I think these are actually titanium CNC nuts. Let's get them on the quick change. All right, so uh, CNC nuts are on. Uh, uh, I'm kind of bummed about that, but uh, it's what it is. It's what it is. So uh, actually, let's go ahead and get these set into the quick change sprocket kit. And then we're going to go ahead and get this set on here and push through. There we go. There we go. Nice and tight. And, uh, ah, I'm so bummed I got to use these silver nuts. The whole point in this was not to have silver, but uh, it's all right. We uh, will get some ordered from um, probably Bellissimoto to do the CNC, uh, CNC nuts. So we'll get these uh, put on. And then now I'm going to, I've just hand tightened everything. I will torque spec everything when it gets back up on the bike. So right now we're just kind of assembling everything, making sure that everything is kind of assembled correctly. Everything is nice and by hand, so to speak. So make sure that these are nice and on there. And uh, yeah, we'll speed this up and get through this. All right, there we go. Nice. Uh, I wish that was black, but nothing we can do. Um, so let's go ahead now over to the bike. Now we have our, our spacer in here, and then this is gonna go in. So we've got everything kind of lined up perfect. Of course, our washer, which will go there, and then our nut, which will go here. All right, guys, so I had to kind of figure out how to finagle getting these torqued because they're a little bit tricky. Um, this is what I came up with, an Allen wrench in the back while i am got this thing kind of softly mounted. And then that way I've got something to hold on to because you want to torque these to 44 pound-feet of torque. So we've just got our little Allen back here. So let's see, get it in there. Just something to hold on to. And 44. And then what we'll do is we'll remove it, spin it, and continue. All right, so we've got everything nice and torqued. Everything is good and ready to go back on. And uh, uh, 
a little finagling. Obviously, we'll have to take this back off at some point and get these cush drives re, uh, remounted with some black nuts. Oh, I'm really bummed about that still, guys. So apologize. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, make sure we're ready here. We've got our little spacer, which is going to go in here, which is going to now allow the spacing between the CNC. So let's see here. There we go. And then we're gonna obviously put in our washer, our little spacer, and our new black CNC nut. Oh, now we're going, now we're going. And uh, obviously get that torqued down all correctly, but ooh, and actually I don't really mind the silver, but I would love if that's black. The only reason why I don't mind the silver is the heads are all silver. So maybe when we drive, uh, change the cush drive completely or the cush, um, mounts, maybe we'll change those, but that looks great. And uh, let's go ahead now and grab our front sprocket. And we're always going to make sure that if you look at it, you always want the numbers out. So you, if you look at it here, you're going to see the numbers are out here. And then the spacer is just a little bit bigger in the back. So that's going to slide right on there. So you'll notice that we're nice and flash and flush in the front. And then we're going to go ahead and just hand tighten this for now. And front sprockets on, rear sprockets on. We're ready to get the chain mounted. So, all right guys, so we've got the chain. I like to give the chain a quick little cleaning prior to, uh, there's a lot of people that do this. A lot of people that don't, but I recommend you do. There's a lot more wax from the uh, manufacturer that's needed to be on here. So while you got it off, it's nice and easy just to be able to uh, kind of get it cleaned off. And then we're gonna loop this thing. So we're gonna lay this back here, get it up under here and get it looped around the sprocket. Now what's nice is once we get it in the sprocket, we can use that carrier as obviously to pull it through. And once we get it back to here, we can pull that tight. And back to here. And uh, you can see we are going to need to be doing some trimming on the chain here. So I'll walk you guys through what we're gonna be doing for the trimming of the chain. But basically we're gonna be cutting this link off here because there's too many links, which will then give us a perfect fit for our chain. Of course, we're gonna have to do the adjustment, but man, look at that. Whoo, I love it. But uh, before we get to this, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, um, actually, let's go ahead and get that done first before we start buttoning up the front because then we got everything mounted and the chain mounted. So let's go ahead and trim that link off and get that all uh, mounted up right. Alright, so we've got everything choppy chop. So now we're ready to get our master link on there. You can see I'm about one tooth off. So we're good here. Master link is going to go in from the back side. There's actually four. Don't forget the O-rings. Don't forget the O-rings. So we're going to make sure that we've got four O-rings total and we're going to make sure we've got them lubed up. So DID, uh, DID that's it. That's it. Uh, they supply you with everything you need for the lubrication process as well as the um as well as the o-rings so we're going to get some lube on the o-rings for the back side and some lube on o-rings for the other one and get this thing mounted there and that through so now we're nice and tight other o-rings luby lube other o-ring luby lube and that's it grab your towel <laughs> and uh, now we get our our link on there we want japan on the outside 
And so what we're gonna do is, now we're gonna use the chain tool to rivet this back. And uh, you'll see how I do that here in a second. Um, I would recommend, um, it's it's a little lengthy process. I'm not gonna just to kind of, for the sake of the video, if you guys don't know how to put the chain back and rivet back, I recommend pulling a whole video out because there's a whole videos on YouTube about talking about breaking the chains on and off. So um, let's go ahead and get that thing on there and those, riveted, those rivets crushed. So the chain's permanent and then we'll start buttoning things up. All right, you guys, so we've got everything mounted. You can see I got a nice little mushroom on my little peg here. Uh, go onto YouTube because I've only done chains a couple times, so maybe the way I do it is not the correct way, but uh, we've got it all nice and put together. So let's go ahead and start putting this part back together and uh, getting all of, our, all of our front sprocket buttoned up, the rear sets and everything, and then we'll move to the back axle nut. So let's get all of this all put together. All right guys, so we are going to be torquing the front sprocket before we get everything buttoned up. So don't forget this, 40 pound feet of torque is what we're looking for. So 30 and 40, and this will be our big boy nut. Let's see if that's the right one. Nope, it's this one down here. And so 40 pound feet, so you can, Look, if you guys do this right, and you'll see 40 pound feet, and there we go, we pop. And uh, now we'll go ahead and get this laid back on. This is gonna go here, and our silver nut is gonna go in this one because this one doesn't hold by anything. And then, the sprocket cover will go on. I'm gonna get this. So I might have to be loose in order to get that over it. There we go. And long black bolt goes on the bottom. Short black bolt goes on the top. And of course, we'll torque all this here in a second. And go ahead and get your rear sets back up. Slide this baby on. And we've got our two silver screws here, which are our rear sets. Let's come down here a little bit. Now what's nice about when Ducati does They've got the yellow markings so we can see the torque, basically the torque spec for this is gonna be when the yellow markings line up, yellow markings line up, and the yellow marking lines up. So that's the essentially the torque spec. So that's why, if you guys ever notice that they put these little marks here, the marks indicate, the yellow indicates where the torque spec is. So just FYI. But the, uh, let's see, the front foot peg, we are going to be doing. All right, and so torque spec for the uh, three bolts here. This one's not, we're not gonna be able to torque this one. We can't get in there to torque it. But it's 18 and a half. So let's go ahead and lower this down to our, let's see, 10. 18 and a half. And this will be our torque spec for our uh, our rear sets. 18 and a half pound feet at 25 Newton meters. Doesn't seem like a, a lot when you got the big breaker bar, but, but it is, it is. And then uh, now we can't get in there with a torque wrench clearly. So we're just gonna have to kind of get in there and just do it 
as close as possible by kind of like by feel. And then go ahead and get that pulled off. And uh, we're buttoned up in the front. Now let's head to the back. Let's make sure we've checked our torque specs. We've already checked all the torque specs around here uh, for the carriage and the sprocket. Uh, I will list everything down below, just FYI. But we are dealing with the sprocket on the rear. All right, so under my sheet, it's under rear wheel. So um, the hub assembly, you're gonna grease it, obviously. The rear sprocket carrier nuts are 44. I said foot pounds earlier, I converted it and I said I meant Newton meters. So 44 Newton meters on these. I also did uh, 44 all the way around here. And then uh, a sprocket side, 230 Newton meters. So let's ask Google real quick. Okay, Google. 230 Newton meters to foot pounds. Here's a result from the web. All right, so we're gonna, it was, it was smart enough for me earlier, but uh, for some reason it's not giving me it right now. So 230 Newton meters is 169 pound feet of torque we're gonna be putting onto this axle nut. And remember I took it off by hand, so that was, so let's go ahead and get this thing torqued down and uh, all buttoned up. And there it is, 169 pound-feet of torque. Let's grab our locking washer, which we've got in black as well. And let's grab our needle nose. Where'd our needle nose go? And so in theory, which it has worked perfect, you'll see up here, you'll see when we lay this uh, washer in, it's gonna go start in this one and go around. And when you pull this one, let's see, am I one back? I am, I'm one back. So it's gonna start in this one, loop around, and I don't know what we're doing here. What am I missing? What am I missing? Oh, that's just a, it's just a lock there. So I thought it went in the second time, so my bad. So pull this back here, lock it in. And now we've got our locking washer, everything in there. Oh, how absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, you guys. So let's uh, let's get everything cleaned up and uh, we'll get you guys a cold start on this thing. All right, guys, so that's it. It is on. We're ready for a chain adjustment, but that's for another video. Make sure you stay tuned because I'm gonna link it right above. We are going to be doing a chain adjustment video for your Street Fighter on how to properly adjust the chain. But, oh, this looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, as you guys know, I really wanted to black this thing out and I, I forgot one piece, so we'll get those blacked out, but, now that it we're mounted, you guys can understand why the super light kit's gonna be so nice because these bolts are all that holds the sprocket on. You can change the sprocket toothing at any time. So if you guys wanna go up, you know, obviously if you guys go up too far, you'll need a new chain, but you guys can change your sprocket without having to take this, this off. So much, much better system. So uh, I'll link that down below. Uh, Moto wheels, I got that from. Uh, all the CNC stuff I got from Belisi Moto. The DID gold chain is just popping. Love it. And of course we've got everything buttoned up up here. 520 chain conversion. So we're gonna save some weight and uh, with the rotating mass and everything, with the aluminum sprockets, obviously we're going to be uh, getting a little bit, a little bit more pep out of this. Not too much, but just a teeny bit. But you guys can see, very, very nice. I absolutely love it. So make sure you guys stay tuned because I'm going to be uh, adjusting the chain now. So stay tuned. I'll link that up above. Uh, but thanks for sticking around. Hopefully this was educational for you guys. I tried to make it as easy. It's a pretty easy job. Don't get me wrong. It just takes a little bit. Of, probably two hours into this. So, um, 
Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, ring the bell notification. Uh, that'll give you guys a notification of when the chain adjustment uh, video will come out. And uh, just like that, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. But outside of that, uh, a pretty simple job. And there's our, there's our yuck pile, all of our old stuff and our new so awesome thank you guys again make sure you guys uh stick around we're gonna be out on the ducati today so maybe we'll shoot you just another video for a ride video but uh thanks everyone for sticking around we'll see you next video Bye bye